Hi everyone, how's it going? My name is Brooke and I'm a geologist. What I thought I'd do this week is give you a, a look around our cutting room where we do all our sample prep and our polishing of rocks and let you look at some of the rocks I've collected over the last four years that I'm working with at the moment, turning them into thin sections so that either I can study them or use them for teaching. So let's take a look. Is the, this is the rock prep lab where we do all our cutting and preparation of rocks. So I'll give you a quick tour. Over here, we've got the polishing area, and this is carborundum powder that we use to polish samples, get them nice and flat and smooth. The saw, diamond edge saw for trimming the samples off. This is the bloody noisy extractor unit. Another kind of saw, this is usually where Roger's chopping up his fossils. This machine in there, we use these grinding wheels as we're grinding down the thin sections. Stick the thin sections on here with a vacuum. This is a, another set of polishing wheels, lapping wheels really, for polishing down samples. These are some really coarse polishing wheels. These copper and aluminium studded wheels. We use these for getting samples nice and flat so they can either be polished or glued onto glass slides for making thin sections. A big hefty drill for drilling stuff. And then another lapping machine. This gets it fine and smooth. We use these rock chips, there's a bit of granite I think, to pack them in. Another massive hefty diamond saw for chopping up huge thick bits of, of rock. Always need a hammer in a geology lab. And then another diamond saw for chopping up different bits of rock again. Oh, this one. This is an alumina lapping wheel. You put that on there, pop some of the alumina fluid on it and then polish your rock on there. How exciting. It is actually, I really enjoy it. Also, just so you don't think I'm exaggerating about how loud the extract fan is, check this out. Massive carbonate nodule that's in the process of being cut up. Look at the size of it. It's like a, it's a gigantic septarian nodule that was found underneath a school field not far from here. And they donated it to us. This one's this bit polished up quite nicely. You can see the original clay there and then the diagenetic calcite which has come in and ruptured it apart. There's a box of someone's samples, maybe it's Ian's, because it looks all metamorphic. Let's have a look, what kind of rocks have we got? Oh yeah, that's crystalline metamorphic. And this one looks fancy. I wonder if these are from the Himalayas, Ian's just come back from the Himalayas. Big box of rock off cuts. And what have we got here? A shelf full of rocks. This is what I'm cleaning up here. This stuff here and this stuff there, that's all my stuff and I need to get rid of the bits I'm not using and my offcuts, free up some space. All that stuff's there, metamorphics, that's probably Ian's or Mike Searles or someone, or, or Anna's, one of the metamorphic people. <laughs> it's down here, got some pieces of granite. And this looks like a piece of my boss's What's this? Oh yeah, it's a neo-proterozoic 
polycarbonate with microbial and aragonite fans and microbial textures from Svalbard. It's probably one of my boss's bits. Ah. Okie dokie, so let's start having a look at this and see what, what rocks have accumulated over the last four years. So first off in this bag, we've got these really nice chunky offcuts of this Wenlock limestone, lots of fossils in it waiting to be prepped and make a thin section out of that so we can use that for teaching the students. There's lots of fossils in there, loads of them. Oh, look, there's even crinoid head, single corals, bits of trilobite. It's not all rocks and fossils. I've picked up some other bits on my travels. So you've got some lovely shells, cuttlefish bones, some nice bits of coral that were collected from various beaches around the world. Look at that one. Oh, it's so cool. It's a pretty cool, some Precambrian microbialite. I think this is collected from a Paleoproterozoic or even Archean banded iron formation in Australia. Some Paleoproterozoic schist from the Pine Creek origin in Australia. Mesoproterozoic black shale. So this is what happens when you intrude a very oil rich black shale with dolerite and then cook it for a bit. It's gone all crystalline, it's pretty cool. Paleo to mesoproterozoic microbial carbonate from Australia again, from the Northern Territory. Some nice Jurassic microbial carbonates from the junction bed and the greater rulite. Mmm, really cool. It's some stuff that John, our thin section master, brought back from the Himalayas. Some schists. What's in here? This. That's fossilized Eocene wood. What else have we got? That's some Permian beach conglomerate sand type stuff. What's in here? Oh, a fossil. Is that some kind of ammonoid? Ah, it's a Moroccan goniatite, Devonian goniatite I found in the desert. This is all stuff I've been making into thin sections. There's a Devonian orthochrome nautiloid. Again, I found in a desert, in the desert, in a fossilized reef. What's this? Uh, some kind of schist and mineralization. Some coal. Some lovely carboniferous siltstone there. Look at that cross bedding. It's fantastic. Look, you can you can actually see it in the in the rock as well. That's from Pembrokeshire near Amros, I think. Fantastic. Nice big chunk of barites there. This for stuff's fun because it always feels way heavier than it looks because it's basic barium sulfate and loads of rare earth metals. This is quite cool. In here we have fossil reed roots, an 8,000 year old swamp in the Sahara, and then fossil locust or bee cocoons from Lanzarote, a bit of trilobite, Devonian trilobite from Morocco, and there's some nice manganese dendrite bits there. This lump is quite exciting, might not look it though, but there's some really cool stuff in here and it's part of an ongoing project that will eventually be a paper. You probably can't see it, but there's that fern shaped thing there. It's actually a beautifully preserved, exceptionally preserved fossil with soft tissue, but that's a secret project for the future and there's much more exciting specimens to come from this. Some more cool stuff from Aaron. This is some Devonian conglomerate, and the class that make it up are actually Precambrian. That's pretty cool. Another nice Eocene fell site. Yeah, look at all the felsic minerals in there. Some big feldspars. That's pretty cool. Not as cool, though. If you like felsic rocks, there's these granites from the granite intrusion. This is a single giant feldspar from the Sierra Nevada batholith. Have you ever seen a feldspar this big? Well, believe it or not, there was actually bigger ones. So how cool is that? That's from the Sierra Nevada batholith. I think it's Jurassic and is in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. Nice ammonitic limestone nodule there back home from 
near Whitby. I think this is from Sands Ends. I collected this one. Look at that. Oh, how cool is that? This is a fun piece. Some Cambrian pipe rock from the Appalachians. Look at those trace fossils. And this one is a microbial carbonate from central England. That's a secret location. I'm going to tell you where I got it from. Cool, huh? Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's uh, not many people who get to see inside our cutting room workshop and look at the samples that we're prepping before we release them as papers or as specimens to museums and things. So if you enjoyed this episode and want to find out more about rocks, be sure to subscribe right now down below. Hit the subscribe button and you won't miss out on any future videos. You can also follow me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash I dig fossils on Instagram with Geology Johnson and on Twitter with Geology Johnson. Also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up for the video and then leave a comment below if you've got any suggestions for future episodes or things that you'd like to see me make episodes about or any questions you've got about earth science and geology. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.